right, welcome back here. Call me audible. This C. As it is both on. Not bees. Bees. And Stefano. I'm thinking about I was glad he could play a single shot on the staff. Okay. I'm thinking about Eagle. Thank you. Diff C. <laughs> yes, yes it is. It is Diff C. All right, let's talk about Diff C here. Um, as Stefano is in the washroom. The big one, um, as we got a notification about 20 minutes ago, but hey, talk about this game, which we will now. All hooks. It's funny because I was like, I was like, my immediate response was, why would we talk about game of the week when you could just watch it? But then I realized I was there at the game, and <laughs> so therefore, it's a game I want to talk about because it's easier for me to talk about games I saw. Um, all the hooks and Jager Bomb. Uh, it was a good game. Um, all hooks were without seal living. That's a big loss, though. What's interesting is, on my way into the field, I said hi to someone I thought was Seal Levine. So I don't know who I said hi to, uh, but it wasn't it wasn't Charles Olivier. So um, Jeremy White did a pretty good job. He turned over the ball twice. Um, it's obviously a higher level of competition than he's used to playing, um, but able to use his feet. Um, as you can see in game of the week, he took off when, when he needed to. Uh, sort of used that to get momentum back in the game um but you know simon duchene just sliced him up man. yeah he just was proficient and again made a couple of mistakes on his on his part too through a couple of interceptions but he had the extra possession and that's what counted in the end took a quiz in and just sliced him up but here's the thing though so seal levine plays they lose by six with jeremy white at quarterback so how much did they win by with seal levine because if you lose by six with jeremy white on two INTs, we're talking maybe a closer loss, not a bigger win for them. Yeah, that's conjecture. Like we don't know. Uh, for all we know, maybe Simone Deschamps plays better. Maybe this time he sort of played down to the competition by making the, the mistakes that he made. Like um, you know, <laughs> that's that he, he did over 260 yards. So uh, it's tough to imagine. It's it is tough to imagine that Yerubam would win this way against a much more proficient Seal Levine, who then has also Jeremy White as a quarter uh, as a receiver. That's what I'm saying, though, right? I mean, it's like one guy goes, it's a domino effect of guys moving to different positions, which weakens your roster. And I wonder, I mean, best on best, this game's a lot closer than, I think this is a, uh, a win for, a loss for Jagerbaum in this regard over uh, all hooks. Yeah, it, it can be. It just honestly, these are the like, two of the top teams in the division, so I don't, um, I don't think it's necessarily, it would necessarily go down that way. Right. Because I think if we if we play this game um, ten times, it's probably going to be a fifty fifty split either way. Speaking of splits, a big win, Pineapple Express over um, Sweat and Beers, forty six twenty six. Chris Olson, uh, two hundred twenty nine yards, seven TDs, uh, seventeen to twenty one. Rocco Cristiano, bad game for him, not a good one at all. Uh, twenty thirty one for one fifty one. Those yards coming mostly in the second half of that football game. Um, Joel Malkin. Again, no one talks about him as much as we should, but 5 for 108, 2 TDs. Joe Malkin's a very good receiver. Very good receiver. And, you know, look, we, we poke fun at Eddie Lee and his, and his roster construction of guys on the Ross, uh, on his team. But when they're all there, Pease, and in this case they were. Yeah. Kevin Wiesel, Julian McLaren-Thompson, Don Benevento, uh, even a guy lesser known in, the, in the higher divisions, Angelo Morlatos, very talented. Um, they're a good team. Yeah. Um, on the other side, however, uh, Rocco Cristiano has a decent squad as well. Before the game, Akeem Hoy Charles kept going up to guys he knows on the other side. Uh, he's you know he's friends with Ali, knows lo knows a lot of the guys through FPF. And, and he's he like, who's going to cover me? Who's going to cover me? Oh it seems like you can't then put up three for twenty six, right? Like you need to have a bigger oh, game. Oh, but you know what happened? The first play or second play, the ball went through his hands for a pick. Oh, that's rough. Yeah. yeah. The, th the thing is. Um, Four sweat and beers, and they were in the, in the parking lot afterwards. They were kind of they were giving Andrew Crothers a hard time because he he dropped some balls too. Uh, it just seemed like anything that could go wrong went wrong. Um, Next, Dana got upset in the game. <laughs> well, that doesn't that shocks zero people. Um, but you know, it was good. It, it was just the game they got out of hand early, and then they didn't have enough time to come back. Right. So the, the admirable effort in the second half. That said, um, it did, they just got off to. A terrible start. All right, P.O.P. Uh, they take For it those out. who were listening to the show, you couldn't see Stefano join us. No, I'm Hi, here. Stefano. Hey, Steph. Welcome. Came back from a run. Felt good. Nice. I Thanks. felt relieved. Uh, P.O.P. over uh, GCH. And uh, I saw this game. 
and uh, gym class heroes. It was tough on the ice to watch this game, guys. Um, so what does that say about P.O.P.? That they played against a team that struggled, and they only came away with a six-point win. Yeah, and Greg O'Brien, who... Greg O'Brien was off again. But, yeah, another yeah. bad day. He had, yeah. uh, I think it was three INTs, but yep. you look at James Donald as a quarterback. I mean, he's still growing to that position, but you can just see that they had someone else at that position. I don't know, Mario Pereca, maybe, if he was allowed to play in this division. Be much different offense, but... Well, he's allowed to play, just not throw. Yeah, but I just thought for P.O.P., a team that was much more well loyal machine, they know each other better than... than than what uh, Jim Classeros has on the roster, there's no reason why they only won by six when they were yeah. down going. They right knew, there. they knew that they shot the bed. Just like in this kind of game, even though they came out with the win, you know, they were all expecting to have like a bigger game, better game. Matt Kirwak came up to me after the games like, "Yo, we just played bad. We got away with this win." Matt Kirwak being honest, good for him. He's usually not. I've never known him to be dishonest. Well, to me, he says that he's Polish. Kirwak doesn't he sound is. Pol- he got upset at me. Is Kirwak Polish? Well, last summer, Matt Kirwak will attest to this story. Uh, oh, right. he, he'd asked me, hey, do you want to watch the World Cup of Soccer? Because he works not too far from my house. I said, sure, no problem. Because Senegal was playing Poland last okay. summer. I said, sure, no problem. Uh, what day are they playing? And he goes, Tuesday. I go, oh, scrap, man. Uh, my dad's got an appointment. He never forgave me. No? Never so basically, me. you canceled plans that you made. No, I didn't make. After. I said, I'd, let me double check. I go, my dad has an appointment. I can't, man. So. Yeah, it makes sense. It's a uh, Kerouac is a toponomic surname and may refer to not uh, a corruption of Kerouac that came from a Lyudzi found in Brittany, like in Rossporden as Kerouac and in Landmere as Kerouac. So, is there any mention of Poland in that? Not yet. You this see? Only. Liar. It's also a common surname in Quebec on Wikipedia. Is it really? Uh, imagine that. It's more Quebecois than Polish. Yeah, Look so he's Quebecois. Yeah. Come so on, Kerouac. He's, he's, he's there. Right there. He told me he's a liar. He told me he's Polish. I'm like, there's no chance you're Polish. I've always like, thought I'm him. I'm like, first off, you're probably born in Quebec, so yeah. you're not Polish. Always always thought of him as an honest person. My, my on, whole man. life has been chatted. What's wrong so with you? So he is more Quebecer than he is Shattered. Polish. Okay. Uh, easy Jake Oven. I watched that game. 32 to 20 over Glow Yang. Can I start a poll? Yeah. Should we make a rule that you cannot throw... To a receiver that is twice the height of his defender? Kevin Smoother you're talking about. Kevin Smoother, yes, yeah. exactly what I'm talking about. Maybe just change the matchup. <laughs> Find yeah, but defender. they're all short. That's fair. They're like okay, five so six. This is Jake. Okay, we're in the red zone. This is my strategy. You do that, this, this, whatever. Okay, Kevin, I'm throwing it up to you. Go up and get it. That's exactly what happens. Kevin Smoother. But that. that's what you that's what you got. He had do, five right? catches like, and four of them were touchdowns, all jump balls. But that's the thing, is you need to take advantage of, of the of the mismatches, and that's where the mismatch was. So right? what do you think? What do you think, audience? You think there should be a rule? It should be an illegal pass if he's twice the height? So like in the NBA? You know, I think you're the right person to come to speak on this. Uh, I would not like a rule like that. It would be complex, but just... Oh my God, we're making fun of you because you're short. Well, you're, well, you're the reason why you're not. Oh, he's not playing. It's your right? fault, man. <laughs> no you one. said that you make you're better injured. decisions. Like, Sorry, who's man. make better decisions? Go you ahead, said you're away. injured. Simon Dashner would have a Fake spot injury. for you on his team. Going Fake away, injury. man. I play in 85 injury. million teams. Fake news. I can't play. False flag right there. So, so yeah, yeah, honestly, that that's basically all they did. He had th- four touchdowns, and they were all to Kevin Schmuda, which is like, jump, catch it, come down with it. That was their strategy, and it worked. Um, it would have helped. I, I mean, think they're more competitive. Hurt. I think a more competitive team. I think See, you uh, know what. To be honest, it, his stat line is not doesn't really display what he, he he's actually talented. Who cool. the quarterback? Brandon Gogol. Okay. Brandon Gogol. Okay. But I, th- I think it was his first time throwing in a field. It is, but he he's the backup of Arnold the other day. Uh, I don't know if it was then or when they played in college or whatever. I knew. But, but I the know thing, was yeah, I, I know, but it's just he had an tackle, arm. Tackles not FPF. No, I know, but I'm just saying his issue, which is Arno's issue as well, always went deep. That's all he did, and it worked eight times. <laughs> you know, legit. The strategy was no no uh, routes less than twenty yards. That was the strategy. <laughs> Too fair. That's a waste of time. Routes. That's all they were doing. It's a waste of time. Why do you go through? Why do you go through less than twenty? Well, to be f- like that, you don't finish eight for twenty-two. Fair. Deep that's developing routes. Good. That's what it is. Uh, Keyport lock hammering junkyard dogs who have yeah, been in, in I, a tailspin. I honestly, honestly, I watched junkyard dogs two straight weeks. I don't know what is wrong with that offense. 
They just can't seem to find a rhythm. They have solid players. They just seem they, they can't seem to score. They have they have never they have not mentally recovered from their playoff loss last spring. Yeah, but see, I I I get it, but like, but you know, I'm serious though. They had all the you. goodwill, all the karma going the way, and they just unraveled. And they they didn't have a good fall, didn't have a um had a mediocre winter season, and now it's self evident that in the span of a calendar year, they are no longer that team that was dominant that they were 12 months ago. But like honestly, I I watched them and I'm like, th- he has Sean Haney who could make serious plays. Like okay, Rob White is a snapper. These guys, Rory. Smudgy. When did Rob White join this team last season? No, he joined a few. Se- Hasn't he been with them for a few seasons? Once last winter, two, three seasons. Yeah, he's been there minimum since spring of if last. Only season. there was a device. Oh, for so we can tell us if he played. Uh, it, why? Wait, wait a second. Why are you asking us? Yeah, who are you? Like that's literally your job is to look it up and tell us. Yeah, it, I create conversation. We got rid of GM for you, <laughs> and that was a terrible downgrade. Awful. Awful. I mean, so he started uh, spring that, 2018. So last year, spring 2018. Yeah. So that's three seasons. Three so years. that was the year that they had the playoff run. Th- that we all Correct. thought maybe they would make it to the finals. They they skunked that place out. Yeah, but see, Rob Boy was more of a defensive player on that team. Yeah, but he was terrible as play calling, though. I know, but like he's more of a defensive minded player than anything. But no, he, he, he no. there's a mosquito. Slap it, slap him. It doesn't matter. Sorry, out of context, slap him. That being said, uh, workplace harassment. <laughs> that is that a right? thing? Is that a real thing? You would think yes. with all these lights in here, it would hover over there and not on your face. Well, the light is technically pointing at her face. Look, so I, I'm a beautiful man. No, you're not. Mo is a beautiful person. Some, uh, some mosquitoes disagree. Keep our lock, though. Jeff Rosenblatt. Jeff Rosenblatt, once again, a very solid outing. Hey, see, well done. He was doing the Viking clap for all of you looking. That being said, Jeff Rosenblatt, he's no, his, if you look at his stat line, it's... He has five touchdowns on 12 completions. Mm-hmm. So basically, he didn't really need the ball much. He used to find oh, He went simply. He went to Raul. Raul, Raul, Baruti. Raul Baruti, who, who was like, honestly, he was unstoppable. Some of the plays he made, I was like, how did he make so that play? So I, I remember talking to Jeff Rosenblatt about a year ago, and he told me, I have this guy. Nobody knows about him yet. He's a monster. Yet. Uh, Raul Baruti is the guy he was talking now about. Now is the time that people will know who Raul Baruti is. But that's is. it. So if you've been watching him for the past little while, you, you see he's constantly making plays. He's he's very talented. He's very good. Um, and Jeff Rosenblatt's finding ways to get him to the game. All but right. There was a play that he was dealing against a, a defenseman that was taller than him. And defenseman. Somehow, defenseman. Defenseman. Defender, DB, defensive back. Defensive back. Nope, I'm going with defense. Defenseman. <laughs> That's what I said now. first. So defenseman. what's the issue? No, no issue. No, no, We're just clarifying for the audience. Defenseman now. <laughs> is that is that not what it is? Is it in the first line pairing or it, second line? Is pairing? he a man so and does line. he play defense? First line. Defense main guy. Man. Okay. Yes. So there was a play that Raul was behind him, but Jeff Rosenblatt underthrew it. And Raul managed to jump over the defender and he still made the play. Like, it's ridiculous. Like I, ha, you couldn't be in a better position so he's to a freak athlete. force an incomplete pass, but it didn't work. Like he was literally between the ball and Raul, but Raul still managed to make a catch. Like how? Yeah, I was like, wow. Okay, he's, it was he's honestly he's a phenomenal he's athlete. He's a very good player, man. Uh, he, people are gonna start noticing him, and uh, you know that uh, that uh, rating is gonna go up, and uh, maybe Jeff Rosenblatt won't be able to have him on the road again. And everyone will know who he is. And everyone will know who he is. He played in DB actually. All right, we spoke about them briefly here about. Um Pineapple Express. Uh, Eagle, can you give us the benefits of eating pineapple for us, please? I'd like to know. Um, it's so a fruit. It's a fruit, yes. It's a very prickly fruit. Fruit is healthy. Fruit is healthy, but it says there's a bit of a sugar in it. Is it does it not? Benefits, benefits of eating pineapple, please. Pineapples can help reduce the risk of macular degeneration, a disease that affects the eyes as people age. Do in part those high amounts of vitamin carrots? C and the antioxidants it contains. Doesn't carrots improve your vision? No. It also no. has anti-inflammatory benefits, bone strength, eye health, immune support system, Get and digestion. Bones. Okay, very well then. So, so on top of it, it makes something taste awesome. Yeah. Wow. Not that I know. Also, uh, the enzymes in pineapple uh, help tenderize meat. For some reason, a pineapple is the symbol of hospitality. Yep. Yeah. No idea why. It's Eagle, also Eagle, uh, why? Why is a pineapple associated with hospitality? <laughs> <laughs> it's al- it is also the um, the f- it was a fruit associated with wealth, and if and you've ever watched wealth. the TV show Psych, the, a pineapple appears in every episode. Okay, the pineapple show that I watched was SpongeBob SquarePants, and he lived in it. Under the this sea. is a different show. Yeah, it's nothing that is a close different show. To SpongeBob. You know what? That was my childhood, Mo. 
Don't hate. I Appreciate know. It. Shocker. All right. No, so we look at uh, Pineapple Express. Are are they they just commission light with a better structure around the team? Well, they have commissions quarterback, snapper, and the def- best defensive back. Before you guys call me out, I'll call him a defenseman again. Yeah, no, so, sorry, you're wrong. Eddie That's Lee. Defensive back. Defense. Defenseman. Defenseman. So, Eddie Lee, jump ship, Pineapple Express. Chris Olsen used to throw for commission, jump ship, Pineapple Express. Don Benevento snapped for the commission, jump ship, Pineapple Express. And, you know, these guys, they played together. They know what it is. They brought in some guys that they played with already, and they seem to be. The first week was a disaster. They had no idea what was going on, and, and but then after they adjusted, and they, fought, but they I also, feel like they also played against probably like one of the top three teams in the division. Well, yeah, says. yeah, but just to say, Simon like they, they took that Simon, says. Simon or Simo, I don't. Does it even matter? Yeah. Mo says. Uh, but yeah, they, they 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 found a way to get together, play together, and now it it, it shows, and and I feel like they're gonna have a good end of the season. Now, are they focused enough in your mind? Or are they gonna start for, from ADD of not? playing every game with the great passion required to win football games. See, they, they also have this, that they th- they take opponents slightly, which is off- it was just usually the worst thing to do. But, like, you know, uh, Chris Olsen, he comes up. He's like, you know what? I'm going to have a major game. And uh, he ends up playing like shit. And all, honestly, just whatever they do, don't psych themselves up. They'll, don't say that it, it's a walkthrough because no game is a walkthrough. And honestly, if they they just real if they just find a way to like just keep playing their game and not uh, taking things too lightly, they'll be fine. So in, it'll be a five and five team. So in layman's terms, you're saying that Brent Bach was the anchor of why they they're no no longer what they were. Well, Brent Bach and brought them together, which is a cute story. But honestly, I feel like some like guys love connection, love yeah. connection. But some guys with Brent Bach and they you know. He's a nice guy, nice guy. But like some people, they just for some reason they 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 play with him, then they realize that they're not a good fit, so they try. But Brent Bosman, you know, he's there. You know, uh, they they want to. So wait, wait, your compliment to him is he's there. There, there. The he has a the presence. Brent Bosman is he has he's a presence. A person. So he he's is a person. So PC that we know who's a nice guy. But nice guys it doesn't make a difference on the field. He's saying five and five. You say what? I say six and four. Okay, I give them that winning. Both playoff teams. I guess both predictions of playoff teams. Yes. All right, uh, as we get ready live for the NBA. That we're not watching. Here at, we're uh, not at watching. PF. We're doing our job, Rob Campana. We're doing our job, indeed. Get off my back. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm back. Sorry, I'm back to this show here. My bad. Uh, <laughs> Dream Breakers, they're 2-0. and uh, Do you like their offense or the defense better? I feel like it's their defense that's going to get them wins. Their defense is strong. And honestly, if they limit their opponents to less than like 18 points or whatever, they'll be fine. But their offense, their offense will not be able to compete in a showdown. What's so as so as long as their defense plays well, they're they're more likely to win. But if their defense no shows, then it's not it's not for them. I mean, overall, I'm inclined to agree. Uh, the definitely the strength of the team is is on defense, but um, th- there is there's a lot of talent as well on the offensive side of the ball. It's just a question of... No, they have talent on offense. I'm just saying that the defense is what will win them games, even sure, though you hate sure. that and very look, much it, piece. It's, it right now, right now, it, the offense is too one-dimensional with Pierre Alexandre being the bulk of the offense. Yes, basically. exactly. So once the, he finds a way, w- once the letter finds a way to get other guys involved, like Francois de Soro, for example, who's excellent. He's a very good player. Um, Former Concordia quarterback. Yeah. Very good player. Um, it seems it seems like they they have the ability to do so. Just the play calling needs to change, and, and Sebastian Deller needs to be comfortable with his entire lineup. Now, Sebastian Deller is he holding back the offense? Because you made the point about Tashe and how he looks at him. I just think it's going to take time. But you know what? In all in all offenses, the quarterback is basically what 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 it, it is. It runs through the quarterback. So whether the offense it's, is a, it's definitely not the defenseman. No. In, for offense, at least, mm. but those defensemen could be offensemen. I mean, they go could be offensemen. They could be two-way player. Offensemen. No, 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 two-way. For now, the guys who catch the ball are offensemen. Offensemen. Okay. 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 Receivers are non-existent. Offensemen. Can, can, can you look it up for us? Offensemen, please. No. Wow, <laughs> what a douche. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the quarterback. You know, any offense runs through the quarterback. So if he's just one-dimensional, then their offense is going to be one-dimensional, obviously. When, uh, but you know, he spreads the ball out, they'll be fine. But th- th- that, like P said, he has to find a way to try and look away from Taché. All right, I uh, Vincent Laganier or Taché, who's the more dangerous player that you worry about? 
I worry about like when Tashe is not double covered. That's the player that I would worry about. But he's he's incredible. He's, he's a, a guy. Very he's not solid. a familiar name in FPF so he's far. Not, he will be another another Raul. Well, no, but he's he's already had a big season in yeah. FPF. But because uh, their whatever version of their team with their Dream Breakers or whatever they were called when they first came to FPF, they they're not a team that's made deep playoff runs. They tend not to get the, he tends not to get attention the way he should. But like he's a guy who's already had significant contributions. Uh, he, look, these are his touchdown totals. So three and five. Not big seasons, but then seven, fifteen, and and nine already. Oh, sorry, uh, my mistake. I read it in reverse. He st- came into the league with nine. That's more what I remember. He came into the league with nine touchdowns in the first season, fifteen in the second season. And so when he's when he's playing, for example, with Levayu, it's, it's more of a balanced offense. Yes, he doesn't have as big an output, but here he's definitely he's the their the guy. guy. He has he has to be that twenty-five touchdown guy. Yeah. Then. So Vince Laganiere, did he? Punch his all star ticket with his six sack performance against Terry Tam. He had six low sacks against Terry Tam in one game. I, I mean, mean like I, I don't think six next like if you if you end with six, like what's he have what's he have so far on the season? Uh six sacks. So yeah, so if he ends with so six. So basically if he doesn't matter. sack any other quarterback, then no. Then no. But you know, he's quick though, and I don't know what it was about that game, but Terry just never got rid of the yeah. ball and he just kept getting picked up. All right, uh, the 0-4 teams here. Uh, there's a bunch of teams. By the way, note, there are games tonight. Uh, Eagle Key Gifts. No, games can't be 0-4. No, there's a, uh, there's a whole bunch of 0-4, like, as in there's a bunch of teams. Ah, I got you. Uh, Eagle, who are playing wow. tonight here? Because there are teams who are 0-whatever, 0-2, 0-3 who are playing tonight. Checking that right now. Glow Great. Gang, uh, take on Dream So Breakers. we have Glow Gang, Dream Breakers, KGP, Keyport Lock, yeah. Backyard Bullies, Easy Jake Oven, A Squad, and Junkyard Dogs. Okay, so are you surprised that KGP champs are... 0-2. You know, I don't know why they're struggling. They're no longer champs, by the way. They're just KGP. Whatever. They're champless. Champless. Defenseman. Off- Defenseman. Offenseman. Defenseman. Offenseman. But uh, I, I don't know why KGP is struggling. Oh, they have to find their bearings. And, like, honestly, you just got to, you know, I haven't I haven't really watched a game of theirs yet. But I know of this team. I know the potential that they have. They just got to, f- like, Phil Cutler's got to chill. He's throwing for them. Yeah, Phil Cutler. Phil Cutler. He's, he's got. got he's got. He's got, he's got seven touchdowns in two games. So, it's not, not a, bad. Not bad, but it's not enough. It's not enough to compete at this level. Uh, yeah, because Division C, you have guys that have seven in like a game. Yeah. So I mean, like he, he has to find a way to find the end zone, which is not easy, but he could. I know he could. He's played in higher divisions. He just. He just seems to be lacking. He has to find his stride, and once he does, then KGP is going to be a, a real threat. But here's the other thing: they played two games so far. And they have six guys who have played one game. That's a problem. Yeah, that's and always that's, that's been an issue with KGP honestly, recently. Chemistry is huge. If you always have to find some guys, no, I'm not going to say on the street, but like you know, find guys that are just there because they just finished the game or whatever. And oh, you know what? Can you play another one? Did you play? You play in Division C? Yes, no, whatever. Okay, I need your your help if you want this that. It's not. It's never going to catch on. You need that balance. You need at least. Three guys that are constant players. Yeah. Like three guys that you I would consider the core. And then, yeah, you could get a sub here and there, and that's that won't really impact. But if it's always subs every game, then there's an issue. So which team is most likely to rebound from their 0 and whatever, 2, 0 and 3 start to perhaps get back above 500? KGP, is it the... Glow Gang, Junkyard Dog. It's Glow Gang. Honestly, this is it the thing. It has to be Glow Gang. Uh, Glow Gang. By yeah, divine right. I don't know why you made this your reputation, Glow Gang, but they're a team that starts 0-4 and, and then they finish 6-4. And, and, and you got like, I don't you know gotta, why. You also have to imagine that Junkyard Dogs will get better. Junkyard Dogs have to figure it out. I mean, there's only so I much that they can do. That. You I don't, don't think so? I don't think so. Honestly, he has to find a way to get to Sean Haney they, more. They're on Rob White, maybe in the red zone, but you have to get to the red zone first. There was one play... Uh, FPF Cup with Rory Samirjan where he blew up on his team for calling the game with four plays left. Yeah, he blew up on Jonathan Larissa. Yes, for calling the game in Brassard. When the game was clearly done. Done. Just yelling in his face. Because yeah. he wanted to play. It, 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 just, it just sort of Twitter is fractured like the team's psyche. Well, but point. I mean, both guys are still in teams. So yeah, no. no, exactly. So, I mean, I'm just saying that in terms of the, well. It's a narrative we built. But exactly. Uh, guys, do we have, do we have a, sex, a sense of direction now of how – Conference A and B is unfolding in this division. Do we have a firm idea? Or are we still in that unknown stage? We're still in the unknown. Still, still early. I mean, more people play. I mean, look, mo- everybody played two games. But the team, late. the teams we knew would be at the top, game changers, and Simon says, are at the top. 
mercenaries, says it's too mercenaries are continuing on how well uh, Gina DeFazio played they in winter. Stoics, yeah. Uh, you know, keep or lock. They play one less game, but like it's it's a lot of the teams we expected, and and the top the top two that are three and zero surprise zero people, uh, and th- they've done about the same thing. Like game changers have scored 105, 103 points in a lot fifty three. Right. Uh, Simon says has scored ninety nine in a lot forty five. So they're they're, they're the they're the two powerhouses in the division with two quarterbacks who probably should be division B quarterbacks, but whatever. Fair enough. Then uh, well, one of them is a division B quarterback. Staring at equal. There it is go. now time for El Gamos of El Wico. Yes. No, Adi- oh, does not it make it sound Spanish. Do that is. That's more. You guys want to pick the games that are happening right now? Obviously. You know what? Could we? Could we please call Simon Dagene? Uh, we probably can. Call him up, please. Ten minutes in, who's winning in every game? Yeah. yeah. Call him up right now. Call up the mic. Well, team. I mean, it's zero zero, zero zero, and zero zero. All right, cool. Uh, let me see what I can do. Hold on. Well, you clearly can't do anything, else so we're done already. So let's pick uh-huh. these games in the meantime. Glow Gang or uh, Dream Breakers, more. Glow gang. What was your question? Glow Gang or Dream Breakers? Glow Gang are probably going to win. I'm going to Dream Breakers. Honestly, if the, if Arno is there. Just because it's too early for Glow Gang to win Here we go. It is. I need two more. It's OB answers. Is this Skype? Yes, Skype. 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 How do you think we call people around here? How do you think we call people around here? FaceTime. No. He's not picking up. All right. This is Simon not wanting to answer, clearly. Well, that was a bust. All right. Jerk. All good. Games of the week. Here we go. Oh, responsible. Bonjour. Hey, Simon. how's it going, buddy? Simon. Hey. He says hello. It shows we're like unknown or whatever. Mike Mayock. We're on the, we're on the, you're on the show, buddy. You're on the Dipsy yes, podcast. Sir. Clearly. Uh, I assumed as much. Did yeah. you though? Because you didn't answer until like four minutes in. Yeah, Who, exactly. Who's winning in all the games? There's no games going on right now. Fair uh, enough. There's Glow Gang, Dream Breakers. It's the 9 game, 10. The game started at 9, but we're late because the lady for the field didn't unlock the net. So we're still waiting for her to unlock all the nets. Oh. And that's the, the update with Simone Dajan. Thank all you right, so much for joining us. We'll talk to you Simone, you're the real MVP, my friend. We'll Take care, pal. We'll, yeah. we'll call you about 20 minutes for the main <laughs> all right. updates. All right. Later. Sounds good. Wow. Ooh. Off to a flying start in Brasserie. That was yeah. phenomenal. There Absolutely. is Stade de Montréal, Honestly, by the way. I'm, I'm blown away by the quality of the coverage. You know, legit, I feel like, once again, they forgot that we had a reservation. And it's just like, oh, what? Yeah. Flag? Oh, what? It's Thursday, isn't it? Yes, but we told you we it's, need to Don't the you play on Sundays and Mondays? Mondays? Yes. And even, oh, you're that people that play I feel during, like you're mischaracterizing podcasts. Honestly. All right. yeah. So rapid fire on the games from tonight. Employees. Glow Gang, yes. Dream Bakers, go. Glow Gang. We said this. Get your KGP, Keyport Lock. Keyport Lock. Keyport. Backyard Bullies, Easy Jake Oven. Backyard. Bullies. I'm going to say Easy Jake. Bullies. A Squad, Junkyard Dogs. A Squad. A Squad. A Squad. A squad. Right. Just A Squad. And then for week four, we nice. have uh, Jaegerbaum versus Gym Class Heroes. Jaegerbaum. Jaegerbaum by a lot. Gym Class Heroes do not have what it takes. Mercenaries versus the Huffman. Mercenaries, Mercenaries. by a lot. Yeah, Go Terry time. Rough, man, rough Isaiah Lord's going to eat Terry. Yeah. He's, oh, he's, 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 like he's going to get eight face will have been eaten off. Yeah. Backyard Bullies versus Game Changers. Bullies. bullies. No, Game Changers. I'm going Bullies in this one. Game Changers by a lot. By a lot. By a lot. Right. Last one. Uh, good, junkyard Dogs versus KGP. KGP. I say Junkyard Dogs going to win that I game. say Junkyard Dogs will win this one. I'm going to go KGP. He's going to have a 12-year-old on the team. He's going to have the 12-year-old's brother. And they're not going to have a roster, so they're going to win. Magic words, please. Lining up for 15 hours before tip-off? Heck of night. Milwaukee Bucks. Wow. Hi, Steve Kirk. I can't see the score. Steve Kerr is in our it's studio. The this is the worst. It's currently 1-0 Golden State. Game over, Game says Mokan. 2-0. 2-0 now. Game over. Double over. Double over. It's definitely uh, over. Drake is wearing a Curry jersey. That's for the boy. Raptors. Trying nice. to risk it. Nice. Yeah. The Drake Curry. I see him wearing purple. Yeah. He's probably wearing Del Curry jersey for sure. Three. 